Is it possible to beat Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel... You guys saw the first part. If you didn't, why the fuck are you watching part two? You guys know the gist. After our epic victory over Manavadin Fablier, Chakra Edition, we are now forced to join up with the Red Rose homies and take on Kaiba and the boys. To start, we have two options. Weevil and his band of bugs in the forest, or Rex and his dinosaurs in the wasteland labyrinth thing. I don't really know what that's supposed to be. <laughs> Seeing as all my fiends get a power decrease on the forest, which makes up 94% of Weevil's map, we're going to start with Rex, and I'll just... We'll figure that one out later. Seeing as he is one of the first duels we'd face in a normal new playthrough, I went into this not too worried. With the Metal Dragon Cyber Commander combo, I could be Waltz around the Wasteland with two cool 2650 attack monsters and movement bonus. That was until I remembered that Rex has one card in his deck that could absolutely fuck my ass. Stainstorm. Stainstorm is one of the few cards in the game that completely wipes the board of a specific monster type, in this case, machines. Luckily, he did not end up playing at this duel, and it went very smoothly overall. I blocked off one of the paths with Magical Labyrinth, Paralyzing Potioned his strongest card, Brachioratus, then proceeded to mill cards for Metal Dragon. Once I got both Metal Dragons out, it was just a matter of chasing down his deck leader, netting me my first Red Rose victory. Moving on to Weevil, I did not have much of a plan for this duel. As previously mentioned, the forest decreases almost all of my monsters by 500 points, while also increasing his insects by 500 points. Translation, I'm fucked. I, well, to be honest, I, I have no idea what I was doing my first attempt. I kind of just rushed in and got my shit pushed in, but I was determined to figure something out for round two. There are no labyrinth tiles on Weevil's map, meaning magical labyrinth is completely out of the question. My strongest fiend would be Ushi Oni powered up by Fiend Castle at a piss poor 2150 on the forest, and Metal Dragon is really only useful on these three plops of Wasteland. I hit him with an early Hinatama for 100 points of damage, which he followed up by sending a 2900 Kawaga Hercules to absolutely fingerfuck my man, Solitude. Thankfully, Solitude's effect spellbinds the enemy monster for three turns when destroyed in battle, allowing me to run to the other side of the map and set up some defenses. At this point, I had pretty much given up, seeing as even on Wasteland, Metal Dragon still couldn't beat his Quagga Hercules, which isn't even his strongest card. But shockingly, as I backed into the corner and started passing turns, he retreated and started doing the same. I know Weevil's AI mainly focuses on getting out perfectly ultimate Great Moth, but he didn't even start ditching cards for that, so I'm not totally sure what happened to break his AI, but I'll take it. Somehow using a single Hinatama and waiting 87 turns won me the duel. Thinking this would be more of a fair fight, I move on to Darkness Ruler, whose map is almost entirely made of darkness. Go figure. His deck is mainly Fiend-type monsters, so I figured this would be a pretty even map, and he's done. Hmm. Necromancer is up next with his low-cost zombie deck. I was a little worried about this one because he can bust out some pretty beefy dudes like Pumpkin and Skelgon, but thankfully his half of the map is Wasteland, which not only powers up his zombies, but also my Metal Dragon. After trading blows for a bit, he moved his deck leader down to avoid an attack from my Zombie Dragon, then proceeded to fuse for a 3200 Skelgon and absolutely blow my balls off. However, in doing so, he left a single space open that I was able to summon Ushionian, power him up with Fiend Castle, activate Call of the Haunted for an additional 500 land bonus points, and finally Wombo combo him into next Fucking Tuesday Necromancer, get the fuck out of here, you bald bitch. After uh, reviewing the footage, I see that he only had uh, 550 life points left, so I, I may have may have done a bit of overkill on that one, but the point stands. Fucking bald bitch. Bandit Keith is up next, and to my surprise, a total ball buster. Anytime I would try to develop a plan, and by plan, I mean play Magical Labyrinth, he would counter it with goddamn magic jammer and absolutely fuck me. My first two attempts ended in defeat simply because his monsters are just way more powerful than mine, especially on the wasteland. Round three started about the same as the first two, so my spirits were looking pretty low. I summoned a beefed up Ushioni, who immediately got railed by Launcher Spider, then finally got off my magical labyrinth without triggering his magic jammer. This is where shit started to get a little funky. For whatever reason, Keith ended up running over his 2700 Launcher Spider with a card that I never ended up flipping up, so I I don't know what it was. I checked the Duelist of the Roses wiki, and it looks like the only card in his deck that is more powerful than Launcher Spider is Barrel Dragon, although I do know he also has a Machine King, which I think is equal to Launcher Spider, so it, it might have been that, but we'll never know. Whatever that card ended up being, 
It is always weird to me to see the enemy run over its own cards, which he did another three times. Once with Patrol Robo, another time with a mystery card, and a third time with a different mystery card. After that, something must have gone haywire with his pathfinding skills, because once he got to the bottom left corner of the map, he kind of just stayed there. With the damage taken from an earlier Hinatama and Sparks, victory was mine in just 87 turns. Okay, hold on, I gotta get a towel. It's so fucking hot in here, Jesus Christ. <coughs> Fuck me. Moving on to... Moving on to the northernmost portion of the map, we take on Labyrinth Ruler. His map is supposed to resemble a labyrinth maze that the player must navigate in order to reach his deck leader. What it actually ends up being is just a series of brick walls and tight corridors that are really fucking annoying to deal with. This never really bothered me, and it doesn't really still, but especially compared to something like Clovis's Redux mod, seeing the maze that he made in that mod is incredible compared to whatever they did in the regular game. Aside from that, his deck has warriors, it has machines, it's got insects, it's it's just, it's just a jumbled pile of shit. The big thing we need to worry about with him is Gate Guardian, a name I'm sure you know well. I hit him turn one with Hinatama for 100 points of damage, which he immediately recovers from with 1,000 points back from Goblin Secret Remedy, meaning there's no way I can win this duel simply with Sparks. I push up the side, take out his wall shadow with King of Yami Makai, and absolutely fumble the Magical Labyrinth. I then fuse and lose Metal Dragon in the same turn to his Labyrinth tank, which I then bait into attacking Fiend's Hand, destroying it the following turn. I fuse for another Metal Dragon, and just by the skin of my nuts, take out his Song of the Thunder. In doing so, his AI ceases to understand how the game works, and he backs himself into a corner protected only by Labyrinth Wall. My, my man, you, you could have used that to You know what? Never mind, I'll take it. Balking him in with Metal Dragon, he finally surrenders, moving us on to the Toon Master Chomo himself, Pegasus. Similar to Jasper Tudor, Pegasus' map loosely resembles a castle, with the interior being his toon terrain, blocked off by labyrinth walls with these kind of normal drawbridge things. At least I think they're supposed to be drawbridges, I really don't know. For my first attempt, after trading blows for a bit, he ends up using brain control on my air eater, hitting me directly for 2100 points of damage, followed up by 1150 points from his Bakuri box. This one's... this one's gonna be a doozy. Attempt 2 went about the same, with him using Brain Control again to take control of my Metal Dragon, hitting me for 1850, followed up by 1000 points from Tremendous Fire, which inevitably killed me. Attempt 4 is where it all comes together. And, and by it, it all comes together, I mean I use Sparks on turn 1, and then uh, ran out the clock to win. I can't remember if I mentioned this before, but Toon Terrain gives every monster a 500 point decrease save for a handful of like tune cards and the cards that it doesn't give the decrease to it gives them a 500 point increase meaning that something like red eyes black dragon normally at 2400 automatically gets dropped to 1900 just for entering the field it is some of the most bullshit bullshit ass shit that the game has to offer and i'm not fucking with it so yes i hit him with sparks on my first draw and then waited out 99 turns to beat Pegasus. And to be honest, I am not sure that there is another way to do that. Also, that motherfucker doesn't even have a rose card, so there's no point in dueling him other than that it's required. Moving on to Ishtar, whose name I think used to be Isis? We face our next to last rose duelist. Her map is largely made of crush, with these wasteland blobs in the middle, all surrounded by a water path. Looking at this now, I think it might be like a volcano. I'm not totally sure, but like, you know, you got like the wasteland in the middle with the the lava ring and the, you know, no, nothing, just, just me. Sticking to the crush tiles, I bust out some of my weaker monsters for this one, starting with three-headed Guido, who immediately gets destroyed by Boulder Tortoise. Using Phantom Dewan's effect, I spellbind her Boulder Tortoise for three turns, allowing me to summon a powered up King of Yami Makai right in front of her leader, hitting her for 2,500 points of direct damage. I then send in Hinatama to block one of her summoning spaces, which she runs over with one of her face down cards. I know that this is a monster card because the enemy AI rarely, if ever, runs one of their spells into yours, even if they know it will destroy it. In an absolute Hail Mary play, I attack the face down card with my 2,500 King of Yami Makai, knowing that it will either end the duel or kill him, since he will be moved on to the crush. Luckily, this card ended up being a Kiminar... Kiminar... 
Ari Koz... This guy... Uh, at 700 attack points, dealing 1800 points of damage to her life points, winning me the duel. On to our final Rose Cardless Duelist, we meet up with King Richard III of England, who mistakes us for one of his allies. This is one of my favorite duels, simply because I just really like warriors, but I also like the simplicity of the map. I hit him with Hinatama turn 1, then fuse for Komori Dragon in an attempt to ascend him around the mountain edge to flank him. He attacks Komori Dragon with Empress Judge, tying us both at 3900 life points. I spellbind his 2700 battle ox with Phantom Dewan's effect, then absolutely fuck up the Paralyzing Potion and accidentally spellbind Phantom Dawn. <laughs> no matter how many times you play Duels with Roses, you are truly never immune to being a fucking idiot. He moves forward and almost completely pins me to the corner, but with some unbelievably tight timing, I finally draw Ushioni, power him up with Fiend Castle, take out his Battle Ox that has absolutely been ravaging my asshole, and finally clear out some breathing room. He hits me for 1900 points from Nico Gal number 2, who I then introduce to Ushioni the next turn. I bait his Empress Judge to attack Solitude on the mountains, spellbinding her for 3 turns, leaving her prepped and ready to fall. I follow this up by baiting some more attacks from Swamp Battle Guard, Millennium Golem, and Metal Warrior number 2, allowing me to come in the following turn with Ushioni, dealing additional damage to his life points. The idea with this strategy is that if the enemy knows it can defeat a monster, i.e. it's weaker and face up, they will go for it damn near every time. This means I can throw out a monster in defense mode that I know will be destroyed, but will bring in his monsters closer to my stronger ones so I can attack them while they're still in attack mode. If the enemy knows their card will be destroyed, they'll switch it to defense mode so as to not take damage. But since they are forced by the code god to attack anything and everything, they go for it, leaving their card in attack mode. Rinse and repeat, we eventually emerge victorious, allowing us to take on the head honcho of the White Roses, Seto. Both Seto and each version of Manavadin Fablier have the same overall map layout, with the exception of Seto's being that the middle is normal terrain. In typical Hunter fashion, I way overextend and send Solitude to his certain demise, getting his shit absolutely rocked by Judge Man on turn 2. <laughs> I then panic, use Magical Labyrinth to block his path, and summon Ushioni to take out his Mystical Horseman, dealing 850 points of damage. I set up Cyber Commander, fuse for Metal Dragon, immediately get fucked by Shadow Spell, run over Metal Dragon, and play King of Yami Makai. He uses Steel Ogre Grotto number 2 to body block the door, but with a little temptation from my deck leader, he moves forward, allowing me to attack him with Ushioni. He also activates Gift of the Mystical Elf, with which he recovers 1500 life points back, since, you know, it was a close one. He moves one of his face down cards forward, allowing me to attack it with Ushioni, and wouldn't you fucking know it, it's Swordsman from a Foreign Land. A card whose effect is the same as Fiend's Hand. When destroyed in battle, the opposing monster is also destroyed. The only good thing to come out of this is that I did get to deal a healthy 1800 points of damage, but I am now out my strongest monster. So, was it worth it? No. I summon the next best thing, Air Eater with Fiend Castle at 2600, and then start flying a little too close to the sun. <laughs> Sending out Karibo, I run over one of his Monster Reborns and a Curse Breaker, which unfortunately triggers his AI to get out of the loop that it was stuck in, and he hits me with his claim to fame, the Blue Eyes White Dragon. Knowing that there is nothing I can do to take out that behemoth, I send in Fiend's Hand and basically get sent back to square one. He flips up two Sword Stalkers at 3100 apiece, and then just leaves them there. <laughs> I move Paralyzing Potion into position, where I will hopefully paralyze the card that is blocking his life points, allowing me to swoop in for the kill shot. Unexpectedly, uh, when his card attacks Paralyzing Potion, it uh, just doesn't move. I don't know if I'm just misremembering how that card works, but I thought that his card, when it attacks Paralyzing Potion, would move into its spot, but apparently it, it, it doesn't, and I don't know, I don't remember that being a thing. Looking back now, he got stuck in a loop, and I could have just ended it here by skipping turns until the end, but I wanted to actually try and defeat him and not just chalk it up to bad AI. So after a very hasty move, I summon Neckhunter from across the labyrinth wall and run over one of his spell cards. After doing so, he attacks Neckhunter with Judge Man, dealing 950 points of damage, giving him a commanding lead. I bite the bullet and end up attacking the paralyzed card, which turns out to be Kaiser Dragon at 2300, meaning I deal 300 points of damage to his life points. I follow that attack up with another move towards his leader, taking out another Kaiser Dragon. He moves his leader forward to avoid my attack, plays a second Judge Man, and kills Air Eater, dealing an additional 300 points of damage to me. Once again channeling the luckiest possible outcome for a duel, he leaves one space open right next to his deck leader that I am able to summon the brother of the fallen Air Eater in, 
hitting him for the final 2100 points of damage needed to win the duel. There's absolutely no way that the duel should have ended this way, but I will take that shit any day of the week. So now we stand toe to toe with the final boss of the game, Manavadin Fablier, Skull Knight Edition, with his bullshit trap cards and all. As mentioned before, he and Seto share the same map with his middle being full of crush. He also has the same leader ability as Yugi, meaning all of my fiends get a 500 point decrease simply for being too close to his leader. This deck is truly so fucking bad and I cannot stress that enough. We both move forward into the crush. He uses Ryri, Ry, Ryrioku, Force. He uses Force. This card cuts my life points in half and adds those points to any monster of his. It's busted as hell and he's got two of them. Luckily, that means he cannot move that monster onto the crush, meaning as long as we don't leave the center ring, we're pretty safe. I activate his mirror force with Mechanical Snail, the guy that I have exclusively used to fuse for Metal Dragon, and this thankfully only hits him, allowing me to still summon this turn, hitting him for 880 points from Barox. I sadly lose Barox to a Gravity Bind the next turn, but to be honest, I, he wasn't really doing much to begin with. He moved back onto the crush, allowing me to hit him for 600 points of damage from Fiend's hand. I am really busting out all of the underdogs for this one. I move forward and summon Bistro Butcher, hitting him for 1300 points of damage, which he then avoids the next turn by moving back onto the grass. He moves back onto the crush, which I try to capitalize with an attack from Unknown Warrior of Fiend, who unfortunately gets zapped by another Gravity Bind, draining his balls and attack points all the way down to zero. Also, he's spellbound forever. It is a real piece of shit card. <laughs> Somehow, through tiny cuts and jabs from the weakest cards in my deck, I've taken the lead. Through what can only be described as some divine ass intervention, he leaves his deck leader completely unguarded by his trap cards. And after making sure that he didn't have a second mirror force lying in wait, I wipe my whole hand, summon Air Eater for 2100, and finish the fight. 21 up, 21 down, and this challenge is finally finished. Fuck this deck, and fuck you, Blast Juggler. Thank you all for watching. I hope I didn't waste your time today, and I really appreciate you sticking around to the end. Again, this challenge was a lot of fun, and I'm glad I got to document me overtaking England or France or whatever the fuck the story is in this game. I've been Aquasloth, you've been great, and I'll see you guys later. Take care.